Hello, dear students. Uh, in this class, we'll discuss about acute and chronic laryngeal inflammations. Important topics from uh, this topic are acute epiglottitis, acute laryngotracheal bronchitis, linkage edema, and tubercular laryngitis. Uh, we'll dis also discuss about laryngitis, different forms of laryngitis, which are not very important from examination point of view, but they are important from day-to-day -day clinical practice for you. Coming to topic acute laryngitis, also called as simple laryngitis, which is the most common condition. I think few of you must have that episode like of laryngitis almost every two, three months or four, five months uh, time. It occurs as a symptom of common cold. Etiology is basically infection, which is caused by rhinovirus, parainfluenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus, influenza viruses. Influence influenza, step strugus pneumonia, and moraxella, all even the bacteria can cause this disease. And other conditions like gastroesophageal reflux disease, environmental installs like pollution, vocal trauma, unfavorable climate, undue physical and psychological stress, all might lead to acute laryngitis. Clinical features of laryngitis are, as all of you know, the symptoms are history of URTI. There should be hoarseness, which is which is causing discomfort on speech, high-pitched husky voice will be there. There will be discomfort and pain in the throat. There will be irritant paroxysmal cough, mainly at night time. Then body ache and malice symptom, there are symptoms of systemic inflammation might be there. Signs like fever, congestive posterior pharyngeal wall will be seen because it is usually secondary to URTI itself. On indirect laryngoscopy or flexible nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy, there will be red and swollen mucus of supraglottic structures, mild swelling and congestion of the true vocal cords, and inspissated mucus or pudent disorder will be there. Uh, most of the times, flexible lan nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy is not performed in acute laryngitis. If uh, clinically patient complains of throat pain, hoarseness, like malaise, body ache for at least five to seven days, if it goes for more than two weeks, then there is a uh, Indication for indirect laring, indication for flexible nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy. This figure shows different types of laryngitis. One is the normal vocal cords. So this is normal vocal cords, which is seen as white structure. Then these are swollen and congested to true vocal cords. You can see congestion and total like swollen vocal cords, along with some form of inspissated mucus over here. And this is the mucopus. So this is these all are features of acute laryngitis. So this is the normal vocal cord scene. How to treat acute laryngitis, simple laryngitis. So most of the times treatment is supportive only. I will with voice rest, medicated steam inhalation, avoidance of irritants like cold, drought, tobacco, alcohol, each. Then mucolytic agents, when there is mucopus in the larynx, it will be, uh, mucolytic agents will be, uh, they just, they help to for the cough to come out or for the sputum to come out like bromexin, guafenicin can be given but guafenicin is not commonly used nowadays so you can use genostyle cysteine and those things analysis 6 to relieve pain and adequate hydration most of the times when there is a mucopus that pus has to go down so person has to swallow but if there is adequate hydration there will be no dehydration of the larynx, larynx or vocal cords so if the vocal cords are uh, dehydrated then there will be irritation and there might be formation of the vocal nodules so patient has to add adequate hydration in case of acute laryngitis codeine phosphate just to reduce the uh, irritation in the throat but codeine phosphate sometimes might lead to dryness of the uh, throat itself proton pump inhibitors to reduce symptoms of GERD reflux disease antibiotics are amoxicillin doxycycline erythromycin they are not very uh, important in acute laryngitis but when there is inflammation when you see mucopus then it's better to start on antibiotics the side effect of toxicycline will be there might be gastritis so patient has to drink enough water when the person is uh, taking toxicycline local anesthetic sprays just to decrease the pain steroids to reduce the inflammation and voice therapy if the problem persists for longer time but when the patient has acute laryngitis for five to seven days then there is no need for voice therapy because as you know when there is inflammation and pain we don't do voice therapy important topic for today is acute epiglottitis so-called acute supraglottitis or supraglottic laryngitis in the past 
it was told that only epiglottis was inflamed but nowadays in recent uh, literature all the parts of superglottis are involved not only the epiglottis but a fold even at the retinoids all will be involved so this is called as acute supraglottitis or supraglottic laryngitis inflammations of the supraglottic structures of the larynx it is defined as rapidly developing inflammation of the epiglottis and adjacent supraglottic stru structures important usually due to bacterial infection that can cause life threatening airway compromise male to female uh, ratio is 3 to 1 so males are more affected than females mean age was 3 to 5 years so nowadays uh, mean age is more around 30 35 years in males so uh, in in the adults also so it is not only disease of the child nowadays in the past it was frequent disease of the children only so causative organisms are hemophilus influenza type b Yes, I B is the common uh, was the common organism in the past. Even it is the common organism now. Other organisms which are responsible for acute epiglottitis are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staph aureus, and tubercular bacilli. Even tuberculosis might lead to laryngitis, so-called tubercular laryngitis or tubercular epiglottitis might be there. Morbidity and mortality in the past, it was uh, so it is called life threatening uric obstruction requiring intubation or tracheostomy. And this is uh, this was in the past, but nowadays the most of the patients don't do this, don't do get this type of infection. Mortality was around one percent in children. Uh, still, the mortality is uh, around one percent in children who develop acute supraglottitis. The course is there will be sudden onset and rapid progression with early airway compromise in children within hours. And it, it will have more of the indolence course in adults. So the organisms that cause inflammation are different in children and adults. It's not the same organism. In children, as you know, it is influx influenza. In adults, it is basically multi uh, multibacterial disease or multi. Clinical features: uh, it is acute onset and rapid progressive disease. There will be severe sore throat, paralysia, dysphagia, drooling due to inability to swallow. And patient will have toxic look child. There will be respiratory distress with the strider, with the inspiratory strider because the inflammatory process lies basically in the supraglottis larynx, supraglottic larynx. So any infection or inflammation or obstruction of supraglottic larynx leads to inspiratory strider. In the past, the uh, the typical feature of a child was a normal child going to play in the ground with the child, with the with their friends. Suddenly comes with severe throat pain and respiratory distress and sometimes difficulty in swallowing. So these are the features in the past, which uh, differential diagnosis, most common different diagnosis of the foreign body bronchus because it is three to five years along with the inflammation, but child will have fever and lymphadenopathy, which are suggestive of bacterial disease. There will be, there will be muffled voice because the supraglottic structure will be swollen. The child will be anxious, may lean forwards, Fixing the neck in attempt in an attempt to maintain an open airway. A uh, triper sign is the sign of acute supraglottitis. You might be asked in the exam. It is sitting up on hands with the tongue and out and the hair forward is like barking dog position. So because at least there will be there some easy to breathe for the child. There might be cervical lymphadenopathy, which is the important criteria that separates acute uh, like in, in, inhalation of the foreign body like suppose foreign body bronchus and others examination should be carried out in the icu or emergency room with intubation or tracheostomy set ready because the child might go into spasm if you try to uh, examine the child and if the child is like uh, doesn't allow you to examine the child might the child might be might be uh, respect distressed or so therefore you have to do all the procedures under uh, in, in ICU or emergency room with intubation set ready. So sometimes you might to might need the child to be intubated there. Lungeal findings on examination of larynx will be inflamed epiglottis, periepiglottic folds and etnoid cartilage. So this supraglottic laryngitis. Sometimes there might be pus in the epiglottis also when there is infection. You can see this is the epiglottis very like swollen epiglottis. So true vocal cords are not visualized, lungeal structures, other structures are not visualized. There is some post, post, post point also, and this is mild swelling of the epiglottis with a narrowed airway, but some part of the airway can be seen, and there is some some saliva there. Collector saliva is there. Investigations carried out for acute supraglottitis are 
Pen X-ray substitution of neck lateral view is very important. It might be asked in the exam as well. The findings are enlarged and swollen epiglottis, so-called thumb sign, and absence of deep well-defined valicula, so-called valicular sign. Uh, mostly thumb sign is usually asked in the exam. So culture from epiglottis during intubation can show the typical organism if it grows in the culture. Then blood culture and throat swabs are also necessary when you want to rule out other atypical organisms leading to acute supraglottitis. Uh, this one in this picture, this is the plain x-ray, soft tissue neck lateral view. Okay, so you can see, so this is swollen epiglottis here and thickened AEF also can be seen, but most of the times you can see thick swollen epiglottis which is the feature of acute supraglottitis. And this one, this is the epiglottis in elderly individuals. This is an elderly man, okay, so having swollen epiglottis. So this is different from the children. So children might have yes influenza as the most important cause and the adults and elderly people might not have yes influenza as the first important, first and foremost cause. What are the parameters for diagnosing epiglottitis in adults? In adults, the epiglottic height to width ratio should be more than 0.6. Epiglottic to C4 vertebral body width radius ratio should be more than 0.33. A equal to C3 vertebral body width ratio is 0.35 and pre-vertebral substitute to C4 vertebral body width should be zero, more than 0.25 and heavy pharyngeal airway to C4 vertebral body width should be more than 1.5. This is not important for you, so it is important for postgraduates. How to treat acute laryngitis? Most of the times, as you know, you will find out the disease by history and by x-ray itself. So investigations are not very much required. So Treatment is priority is to ensure the patient's airway, either intubation or trigastomy under general anesthesia if respiratory distress or restarted occur. So most of the times nowadays we can keep the patient in pediatric ICU and see the response, how much rapidly progress will be there. Then we can do intubation. So most of the times we don't require trigastomy nowadays. So mechanically ventilated until swelling and inflammation decreases. So by 24 to 48 hours with use of antibiotics and steroids. Uh, the inflammation decreases and after 48 hours person can be brought back person can be extubated also the careful monitoring and isolation should be there it is because as you know this is infectious disease and it can easily spread so the child has to be carefully monitored for area obstruction itself and the child has to be isolated from other children the next is the steroid treatment prednisone 1 mg per kg start okay or you can give hydrocortisone so patient cannot swallow prednisone, so you have to give hydrocortisone itself. This is very important. Steroids rapidly decrease the inflammation, so they are strong anti-inflammatory agents. Next is antibiotics, either ampicillin or cefriaxone or cefriaxone, all can be given. Ampicillin is drug of choice. Either the clomiphenicol is drug of choice, but nowadays we don't use clomiphenicol. So ampicillin, cefriaxone or cefriaxone can be given at the initial stage. So they are uh, given as the broad spectrum antibiotics. A seriousness is important, midazolam 0.1 mg per kg bolus and continuous IV infusion if the child is intubated. So the child might uh, fight with the tube, so it is better for the child to make sedated. So the child doesn't cry. If the child cries a lot, then again there will be spasm. So adequate hydration should be there. Then oxygenation should be there, oxygen supply should be there. So next is acute laryngotracheal bronchitis group. It is the commonest infective cause of URTI. Okay, you have upper extract obstruction in children. 40 times more common than epiglottitis because this is a viral infection. So acute epiglottitis is a bacterial infection and acute laryngotracheal bronchitis is the viral infection. Its main age is 18 months, which is slightly uh, shorter, like you are younger than acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Then acute epiglottitis. Usually occurs in three to five years, but acute laryngotracheal bronchitis occurs in the age of 18 months. So maximal effect in subglottic area. As you know, the effect was in the supraglottic area in acute epiglottitis or supraglottitis. And causative agents are parainfluenza virus type 1, 2 and 3. So this is the viral infection. Influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, rhinovirus and measles all can cause acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Uh, then clinical features are symptoms. It is almost always preceded by URTI, usually at least 48 hours duration. Therefore, uh, it is slightly different from acute epiglottitis or supraglottitis because 
Acute subarachnoiditis mostly is an emergency condition, so it happens very rapidly progressing. So acute laryngotracheal bronchitis almost always precedes by URTI. So patient will have first the child will have URTI, then only there will be respiratory distress or cough. There will be sore throat, hoarseness, croupy cough is important. Uh, it just it is a, it is like mucus, musical cough of crying quality or bark of a seal. So you have to differentiate from cough between acute epiglottitis and acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Uh, there is respiratory distress mainly at night time, so it is not very disastrous as like acute supraglottitis in children. So child prefers to lie down. So tripod sign will be seen in acute uh, epiglottitis or supraglottitis, but child usually prefers, prefers to lie down in cases of acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Signs are slight pyrexia, there will be fever, there will be inspiratory or biphasic stridor because problem basically lies in the subglottic area, there is lower part. Then there will be inflammation and ulceration of the true vocal cords will be there. There will be edema and ulceration of the subglottis, which is one of the characteristic features of acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. There will be sloughing of the trachea because the inflammation lies everywhere. So it is called as acute laryngotracheal and bronchitis. So rest of tracheobronchial tree may be affected. It is different from uh, acute epiglottitis because supraglottis, only supraglottic structures will be affected. But in case of acute laryngotracheal bronchitis, Larynx, trachea, and bronchi also might be affected with sloughing. Uh, then, what is bacterial laryngotracheal bronchitis or so called pseudomembranous group or pseudo group? Because so bacteria also might cause laryngotracheal bronchitis when the child is having measles like um, uh, exanthematous fevers like that. So, it will be more severe than acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Is bacterial infection causative agent being staph aureus? Then pathology is sloughing of the respiratory epithelium whole part, not only uh, the larynx. Okay. Then clinical features like brassy cough with high fever is the characteristic feature in case of acute bacterial laryngotracheal bronchitis, which is different from acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Acute laryngotracheal bronchitis is called as croup, but bacterial laryngotracheal bronchitis is called as pseudo croup or pseudomembranous croup, which might be asked in the MCQs. Investigations for acute laryngotracheal bronchitis are plain x-ray, soft neck, AP view. In case of acute laryngotracheal bronchitis, this was, that was lateral view. But if this is in case of uh, acute laryngotracheal bronchitis, this is uh, AP view. The narrow subglottis because you know the most of the bulk of disease lies in the burden of disease lies in the subglottic area. So called narrow subglottis leading to steeple sign. Then bulging of hypopharynx will be seen because as the subglottis is narrow, then there will be some form of uh, bulging in the hypopharynx. Blood gas analysis has to be given for when the has to be done when the patient is supposed to be hypoxic. And laryngeal findings during intubation can have to be seen. But the most bulk will be in the subglottic area. There might be sloughing also. So this is the, as you can see, this is the widened lower part and the narrow upper part of the airway. This is called steeple sign. This is seen shown here in the picture. Okay, steeple sign. This is the steeple sign. Treatment is by observation of course, stridor, restlessness, body color, respiratory, and heart rate. Each the patient might have stridor, child might stridor, the child might be restless, might have the uh, cyanosis, then might have respiratory and heart rate will both increase. Then reassurance is given for the child as well as for the parents. They have to be calm, confident and reassuring at atmosphere. Because as you know the child will be of small age, so the parents have to be more calm. This should be adequate hydration, either oral or IV fluids when the child can take, then oral otherwise IV fluids have to be given. Humidification has to be there because as you know there is dryness and there is uh, there are more of the crust formation. So the crust have to be humidified. The child has to take out the, it should be able to cough out the crusts. The oxygen therapy is important, which decreases reflex bronchoconstriction, sputum retention, and pulmonary edema, uh, which is important. Which is important basically in children having a laryngotracheal bronchitis. There might be sputum retention due to crusting or dryness. Steroids again, they are drug of choice. Dexamethasone 0.6 mg per kg single dose, or or hydrocortisone also can be given. They are strong in anti-inflammatory agents. So antibiotics, IBC free axon, 100 mg per kg per day uh, to be given in a high dose. Rhythmic adrenaline, nebulization and delivered by IPPV. 
intermittent positive pressure ventilation. So this also helps to uh, it dilate the airway. Therefore, the airway dilatation should be there. There should be no airway constriction. Intertracheal intubation or tracheostomy are rarely required in comparison to acute superbronchitis. Although acute epiglottitis is the less common than acute laryngotracheobronchitis, intubation is more important or is more of the time it's necessary in cases of acute superbronchitis, not in acute laryngotracheobronchitis. Our next coming to chronic laryngitis. So, more two very important topics in the exam were acute laryngotracheal bronchitis and acute epiglottitis, which have been covered. And I will move to chronic laryngitis. It is defined as chronic, non specific inflammatory process more than three weeks, leading to irreversible alterations of the laryngeal mucosa. Very important. Acute laryngitis, patient would have worseness, again, that worseness will be completely recovered, or there will be uh, reversible alterations of the laryngeal mucosa. In case of chronic laryngitis, patients will have irreversible alterations of the laryngeal mucosa. Etiology is endogenous factors like short, heavy built people, people having diabetes, hypothyroidism, vitamin A deficiency, all might lead to uh, chronic laryngitis. So, the one of the treatment for chronic laryngitis will be vitamin A supplementation. Exogenous causes like physical causes, cigarette smoking, inhaled irritants, basically poor, uh, occupational parts, then chemical allergy chronic infections of upper or lower respiratory tract and chronic cough all might lead to chronic laryngitis. History and clinical symptoms uh, onset will be insidious. Uh, most common feature of the patient to present in chronic laryngitis will be hoarseness which will be worse in the morning time. There will be dryness and freeing of foreign body in throat, decreased vocal range and pain will be rarely present. In contrast to vocal nodules with the pain will be worse in the morning time or worse will be worse in the morning time because one of the common causes for chronic laryngitis is supposed to be gastroesophageal reflux disease. So this will be dif different from vocal nodules or vocal polyps in which the worsens will be worse in the evening time or afternoon time. This might be asked in the MCQs. Okay, worse worsens in the morning will be seen in daughter or worsens in chronic laryngitis will be seen in daughter. Uh, it has two clinical forms. One is simple diffuse chronic laryngitis and next is hyperplastic diffuse chronic laryngitis. Important. One is simple, which is diffuse chronic. Next is hyperplastic and there is hyperplasia of the tissues in the vocal cords. Okay. So coming to simple diffuse chronic laryngitis, it starts with URTI and persists as hoarseness and cough over a long period of time. So chronic. On examination, there will be written hypo, hyperemic laryngeal mucosa. The two vocal cords are pink or red, glossy and some mucus edema will be there. Treatment is by voice rest, steam inhalation, antibiotics, amoxicillin, coemoxiclab, those medicines and avoidance of alcohol and tobacco are the important things uh, for the patient to be explained. Next is hyperplastic diffuse chronic laryngitis. The contributing factors for hyperplastic laryngitis are chronic infection of sinuses and lower airway, basically sinuses leading to postnasal drip, tobacco and alcohol use, Occupational, chemical or physical irritants and mouth breathing are important. Suppose when the person is having DNS or when the person is having uh, nasal polyps like that, the patient will have mouth breathing as well as there will be chronic infection by postnasal drip. So they are the common factors which might lead to hyperplastic diffuse chronic laryngitis. On examination, two vocal cords lose their normal appearance. In contrast to others, there will be red, deep red or grey color. Patches of epithelial thickening and broad-based polypoid lesions can be seen in the in the vocal cords on in examination of the vocal cords by either IL or by flexible nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy. Uh, coming to linkage edema is also an important topic which might come in the final exam either as short note or in MCQs. Get treatment of linkage edema or findings of linkage edema. It is defined as accumulation of fluid under the epithelium of true vocal cords. Etiology is precise cause unknown, but might be allergy, infection, local irritants like alcohol and tobacco. In our setup, most of the patients uh, will have tobacco use, history of tobacco use, or then alcohol, then smoking uh, is the common factor. Clinical features are common in females, smokers of 36 years of age, very important. So, common in females is smokers. So, female smokers are the, even in our setup, female smokers are the common uh, presenters. Worseness with dip, dipend and monotonous voice will be there. There will be dry cough and a bit of clearing of throat. 
Okay, then it will be on examination, vocal cords will be red, swollen, and slightly translucent with fusiform, symmetrical, and polypoid swelling of the true vocal cords. So, this is very, very, very important finding. So, fusiform swelling of both the vocal cords or symmetrical fusiform swelling of both the vocal cords is suggestive of Rinke's edema. This might be uh, asked in the MCQs in the exam. The treat, this you can see the edema over here. This symmetrical, almost symmetrical edema of the vocal cords. Okay, it's simply you can see like transurias or there will be. Uh, you can see the swelling here. Treatment is by elimination of noxious agents. The microsurgical removal of the strips of vocal cord mucosa by microlaryngoscopy, so-called decortication. So both the sides can be treated at one setting, but don't extend the incision to anterior commissar. So if you extend the incision to anterior commissar, then there might be chance of formation of the adhesions. Okay. Then absolute vocal rest for one week is required, and speech therapy can be given after two to three weeks. So this is all regarding the rinkage edema. Then last topic for today, tuberculosis of larynx is also important. It is not very uncommon in our country. It is commonly associated with pulmonary tuberculosis. The posterior commissure, arytenoids, and the two vocal cords are mainly affected because of contact of larynx with sputum containing tubercular bacilli. It is the basically the older thought, but still we are practicing this. So most of the times the posterior commissure is commonly involved. There will be ulcers in the posterior commissure as arytenoids and uh, in the basically posterior part. Uh, there will be hematogenous and lymphogenous infection, which is more accepted nowadays. Not exactly secondary, it is also the tube pulmonary tuberculosis, but there might be hematogenous or lymphogenous infection will be there. But patient, most of the times, patient has to have primary tuberculosis or uh, lung tuberculosis to have laryngeal tuberculosis. Pathology is subepithelial infection, leading to exudation and hyperemia of the vocal cords or tissues in the posterior aspect. There will be round cell infiltration. Most leads to tubercles, grand dermatis reaction plus lung and sinus cells and cages necrosis. At that time, patient might have turbine epiglottis. So epiglottis might be involved leading to thick epiglottis or solen epiglottis, which is different like one of the DD of acute supraglottitis. There will be sloughing with ulceration of the epithelium is very important, leading to shallow ulcers with undermined edges involving the retinoids and the epiglottis, so-called mothitin appearance or mothitin epiglottis. There will be severe pain because there will be uh, inflammation of the cartilage, there will be perichondritis because there will be sloughing with ulceration of epithelium leading to shallow ulcers. Okay, and tubercles sometimes they might in, uh, involve the epiglottis, epiglottis of the cartilage, you already know. So there will be perichondritis that leads to severe pain in, in cases of tubercular laryngitis. Clinical features are history of pulmonary tuberculosis, might be secondary to pulmonary tuberculosis. So, Cough with hoarseness will be there. There will be dysphagia and throat pain and referred at the area out of proportion to the reason are diagnostic of tubercular laryngitis. So there will be severe pain in throat okay, and that might sometimes relate to the ear. There will be mucosal hyperemia or edema on, uh, in the flexible laryngoscopy, irregularities of the mucosal surfaces, so called mothitin appearance, and glandular lip mass and ulceration can be seen in the erythroids as well as in the epiglottis. There will be swollen and turban shaped epiglottis is one of the uh, finding which might be present in tubercular laryngitis. Diagnosis is by direct laryngoscopy and biopsy. Chest X-ray PA view to rule out secondary uh, to rule out the tuberculosis of lungs or primary tuberculosis of the chest. Then sputum for AFA if, if it is positive then you can be sure that person is having laryngeal tuberculosis. Treatment is by antitubercular medication for 6 to 8 months. So 2 years are ready plus 6 years are commonly used. So you can, nowadays you can use for 6 months also. So this is a standard treatment for uh, laryngeal tuberculosis. So extra pulmonary tuberculosis treatment. So thank you very much. Hope that you have understood the course or understood the class. And you might replicate what is told in case of acute epiglottitis and acute laryngotracheal bronchitis along with rinkage edema in the class you might have be having either long case or a long question or short question in case in these three topics and tubercular laryngitis is also important which might be might not be asked as long question in the exam but you might be asked either short or you might be asked regarding the mcqs so which condition is very much painful so we'll ask one or two extra questions followed by tuberculosis of the larynx like ringage edema sarcoidosis tuberculosis like that okay 
thank you very much for being a uh, patron in the class and just seeing the videos, YouTube videos. Thank you so much.